This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 7 this is section 4 Part 1 of 5 Going Deep with the Early Lessons Part 1 of 5 Lessons 51 and 54 are a review of the first 20 lessons of the workbook. Let's use them to take a close look at the early lessons. Lesson 1 starts out with Perception with what the deceived mind seems to see. Nothing I see means anything. The first three lessons deal with distorted perception and then, bingo! In lesson four, he introduces thinking for the first time. Then he introduces the past in lesson seven. When I have forgiven myself, and remembered who I am, I will bless everyone and everything I see. There will be no past and therefore no enemies and I will look with love on all that I failed to see before. Workbook Lesson 52, Para 2 Lesson 8 combines time with thinking. My mind is preoccupied with the past thoughts. In this lesson, he is talking about, both about the past and about thought. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. The three main elements that are being worked with are time, perception and thought, three different aspects that keep being interwoven. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I see only my own thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. Workbook Lesson 52, Para 3 If we replace my own thoughts with ego thoughts, we have I see only ego thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. This means that ego thoughts are the past. What then can I see as it is? Let me remember that I look on the past to prevent the present from dawning on my mind. Let me understand that I am trying to use time against God. Let me learn to give the past away, realizing that in so doing, I am giving up nothing. Workbook Lesson 52, Para 3 Let's look at the line. Let me understand that I am trying to use time against God. That is the basic problem. The mind is trying to use time against God. Everything we go into will be about getting clear on what that is. Time in and of itself is not harmful, but time used for the ego's purposes is harmful in the sense that it takes away peace of mind. You lose the awareness of peace of mind. The ego's construct of time is linear. The ego tells the deceived mind that you are guilty in the past. The ego says, look at you as a person. Look at your past. Look at all the mistakes you have made. 
Look at all the things you have done wrong. Look at all the things that you have messed up. You are convicted. You are guilty in the past. There is no doubt about that. And then it wants to skip over the present and say to the mind, and your future is going to be as bad as it was before. It is a closed system. You can see why there would be fear of retribution or fear of pain to come in the future if the mind listens to the ego's belief that pain and guilt were real in the past. It wants to skip over the present and see that there is going to be more of the same. That is the ego's use of time. You can see that if you listen to the ego about time, guilt will be reinforced. There will be fear of future consequences. The Holy Spirit does not skip over the present. The Holy Spirit emphasizes the present as the only aspect of time that is valuable. The only aspect of time there really is. I see nothing as it is now. If I see nothing as it is now, it can truly be said that I see nothing. I can see only what is now. The choice is not whether to see the past or the present. The choice is merely whether to see or not. What I have chosen to see has cost me vision. Now I would choose again that I may see. Workbook Lesson 52 Para 4 Review of Lesson 9 Here he introduces the idea of vision. Vision has nothing to do with the physical eyes. This is one of those things to keep your mind open about. You do not want to fall into a sense of complacency, of thinking about how far you have come or how spiritually advanced you are. Remember, the choice is not whether to see the past or the present. The choice is merely whether to see or not. If you perceive a world where there are separate images and you still feel a charge about anything, that is the indicator that you want to ask for help. Lord, help me today. I am determined to see. Help me to see. That is where the openness and the humility come in. If you feel a charge about something, you not only are not seeing clearly, you are not seeing at all. This gets away from the thinking of seeing better or more clearly than before. That can sometimes feel like a little pep talk. But you can fall into complacency and be content with seeing better. Ultimately, we have to come to understand that even seeing the door handle is an attack thought. It does not seem to be an attack thought. But you actually make all the things your enemies because everything that the deceived mind sees is something that exists in and of itself as a separate thing. That is a picture of attack thoughts. It thinks it sees all these separate things that exist apart from my mind. But it cannot be so. There are so many expressions of the mind thinking of itself as a person, as a separate person, like all your feelings of longing or restlessness, for example. Restlessness is the thought that there is something different you could be doing 
or some place else you would rather be. That is a pretty common thought that rolls through consciousness. If only I had the resources, I could. That is an expression of the mind thinking of itself as a person that is imagining other situations and events that it likes more than its current circumstances. This is impossible. Where else can you go? You have always surrounded yourself with projections and illusions. What is the difference if the constellation seems to move a little bit from this scene to that one? Attack thoughts are still attack thoughts. No matter if the body seems to be here or there. You can imagine the body with the ideal soulmate in the ideal setting. Hawaii. Waikiki Beach. There you go. You could fantasize about scenes with this ideal soulmate. What you would do, where you would go, what you would eat. But the whole basis behind this belief that reality is yours to choose from and that you can imagine things a lot better than they are now. If only something was different. If cause and effect are apart, you ain't seen nothing yet. I have seen glimmers of more pearls on distant shores that I have not yet partaken of. What we are trying to see is that there are no pearls on any distant shores. There seem to be so many options. It would not be difficult at all to use the word infinite to describe the choices of the world. And what about in the cosmos? The Urantia book says, Earth is one tiny speck out of the whole projected time or space cosmos. Just in the realm called Earth, there seem to be an enormous among number of choices. Some might use the word infinite, but infinite ultimately means having no end, and everything in form has an end. There are a finite number of choices. End of section Part 1 of 5 We will continue with part 2 of this section in tomorrow's episode.